Happy Muscle Radio. Okay, our next guest is a little different for this show. Uh, we left the typical male, stereotypical bodybuilder, and we brought in adult film star and NPC bikini competitor, Inari Vox. Welcome to the show. Hello, thank you for having me. Well, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be able to interv- uh, interview a beautiful woman for a change on this show and uh, to mix things up a little bit here. But I thought you... you got to do that sometimes. That's right. But I thought you were enough... Uh, of, of, you were of interest to me. The, when I heard about what you do, I was very interested. And I want to start, first of all, before we get into your whole career and how you got, did all this stuff, where does your name come from? Because I can't imagine that your mom named you Inari Vox. <laughs> No, she did not. Although I did trademark it, so it is technically mine. Inari is the Japanese goddess of good fortune, and Vox, I took Grand Vox, is one of my favorite authors. Okay, so you're a combination of a goddess and a uh, an author of a book. <laughs> <laughs> at least you could explain your name. You know, I was at a strip club once, and this girl had a poem written on the side of her body, um, tattooed, tattooed on the side of her okay. body. And okay. I said to her, who, who wrote the poem? Who's this poem by? And she's like, I don't know. So, <laughs> so uh, there's always nice when you know the, the backstory behind something that, you know, either indelibly yeah. written on you or is, is, is your name, you know, so. It's kind of important. <laughs> so I would think so. I would think so, right? You never know that. Wow. Talk to me a bit about how you got into the porn industry first. Okay. Um, well, um, in late November of 97, I had, when I moved to Southern California, I had the opportunity to get into the adult industry, which presented itself in a peculiar way of chance and being a big fan of the adult industry I was very curious and I was pretty determined just to do one say that I did it just for the fun of it now why were you curious not a lot of not every woman is is curious to the point where they would actually go up and do a a a role on a video you obviously had more of a curiosity than than most people I had a very heightened sense of sexuality. I'm very cerebral in my sexuality anyhow. And already knowing that I was a bit of an exhibitionist, it was just something that intrigued me. And I, I'm very passionate about the apology of, of the porn industry. You know, it's more than just fame or money or having sex. Yeah, all those things are all very important and all very great. But it's a necessary evil in our society that I believe in. It's not even evil. You know, I, I, that, that wasn't even right to say. It's, 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 it's necessary. <laughs> Uh, you're riding motorcycles bike. while you're talking to us? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> I like to hold you down. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's very necessary in, in the development of accepting of our own social sexual aid in our society, I believe, because sexuality is so taboo to even talk about or accept in ourselves. How many women do you know that actually have embraced their own full sexuality and, and can be a positive sexual role model? Well, I don't think that I don't think that many because I think that the society will look down upon that on some people, don't you? Absolutely, and I, I take my role as being a sexual feminist, as it were, of being you know pro you know, pro feminine, sexual strong, to be able to you know teach people it's, it's okay to be you and love yourself because if you don't love yourself, how can anybody else? Sure, very and, true. Yeah, and and the thing is, if I, I meet women all the time that don't even know how to please themselves. Mm. Let alone talk about it, and and it's 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 just that it, it just baffles me because if you don't understand your own sexuality and you don't know your own sexual id, then you don't know yourself. And if you don't know yourself, how can you get along in this world? Sure, no, <laughs> get along you, with other people. Prior to getting into porn in 1997, were, were you able to please yourself? Did you know about that? Absolutely. Okay. I don't ever remember not being able to please myself. Actually, um, although I was not a very promiscuous person, um, as I was still extremely very sexual, like I said. Now, and, how, do you um, remember when your first time of uh, pleasuring yourself was? How old you were? I, again, I don't remember ever not. So okay, the so. very first time, no, absolutely not. So you were like I, a, you were having <laughs> orgasms at like one years old, probably for all you know. I was always such. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you had very happy boyfriends too along the way. I'm sure. You know what? Honestly, I I, I married my first real boyfriend in high school. We were together for 12 years. Wow. And, um, yeah. How old were so, you then? Um, we were together since my um, my junior year in high school. 
You got married in high school? No, 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 no. We had oh. been together. Oh. We, we got married. Yeah, we got married um, in my twenties. Oh, okay. Was he? Were you? In, were you with him when you got involved in the porn industry? Yes. How do you we feel about together. that? Well, we we were never really monogamous our entire relationship, and he was very supportive. Really, I, he was. I'm sure he was supportive because you guys were. Uh, were you guys swingers, or were you guys just doing your own thing? It was kind of open. It was swinger esque, you know, but not necessarily in in the lifestyle of you know the technical swinging term. Mm-hmm. You know, it was, it was definitely open. If you wanted to go out on a date with some other guy. He didn't have a problem with that. Well, we didn't really. It wasn't really so much. Date oriented as it was more like hooking up oriented. Sex oriented. Sex oriented. <laughs> so was that like your transition exactly. into the porn? Because you were already comfortable, obviously, doing these, you know, these type of things. Yeah, I was. I was already very comfortable. I mean, it's very different, though. You know, having you know relations on camera as opposed to in your personal life. You know, it is very different. Well, what's so different so, about it? I, I would think for a man, yeah. it's different because the men have to perform. But for a woman, it doesn't really matter, does it? No, no. It, 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 in some essences, you're true because, um, you know, a woman can take it all day long. But if you actually care about what you're doing, you're not going to do that. <laughs> so you, never, you, don't um, fake, you're, you're, you don't fake on camera? Um, I mean, there are moments of embellishment that you have to mm-hmm. um, at times, you know, to match a shot or to make it interesting because, you know, you're, let's, you're making a product. You know, you're, selling a, you're, you're making a fantasy. You're selling a fantasy. Mm-hmm. You're selling a moment. So you are making a product. Um but I, it, it, it takes up more energy to, to fake it and make it believable than it is just to relax and really do it. I agree with you. I'm going to be honest with you. When I, I'm not, you know, if I watch porn, if I can tell that they're faking or that, that they're just making the noises they're supposed to make, I completely, uh-huh. I am not turned on whatsoever. I, I laugh and I, and I can't even watch it. I agree with you. And, and as a performer, there's very little I have control over unless it's my own, you know, my own project. Um, Oftentimes, I don't have I don't have final say on um, the look of the character or the editing or the lighting or the location. The only thing I really have control over is my performance at that time. Are you performing right now? Because I'm having trouble hearing you. You're, you're drifting away from my <laughs> my phone call here. Oh no! <laughs> don't let don't don't perform now, please. Be real. I'm not performing. All right. All right, so, the, what was the first scene you did when you were 23? Um, it was. <laughs> Slightly controversial. It was from Max Hardcore. Let me hear it. What was it? Um, well, it was fine. It was it was great. He's just he it, his his particular product is more fetish oriented in regards to a certain type of fantasy that um, is kind of frowned upon most of the time in the industry because he, a lot of times the girls get depicted as younger ages than they really are. Mm-hmm. Um, I never personally had a problem with him because he, he has, he always treated me as a person with the utmost respect, sat me down and showed me, you know, the particular thing, you know, thing he wanted. Um, he wasn't, he, 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 he uh, how can I say this? Um, he has a very great respect for a strong woman. And sadly enough, if he finds that you're a woman with weakness, he will try and exploit that. And, mm-hmm. um, but that's just people in business in general. Now, who's this? Who you uh, it was Max Hardcore. Max Hardcore. Okay, that's his name. Yeah. So what was your scene that Max Hardcore wanted you to perform? Um, or that you didn't you know perform? what? Um, it wasn't. It wasn't actually anything so crazy in, in his line of, of work. For saying honestly, I can't even tell you the setup right now. <laughs> it was so long ago. <laughs> so you don't want to talk about it? No, I, just, I, I couldn't even. I, I, I don't even remember. Oh, exactly you don't even that, remember? No, no. I'm I, sure. I saw it wasn't, it wasn't as crazy as a lot of his other things is what I was saying. I'm sure one of our listeners will find the scene that you did somewhere and we'll, we'll post sure. it online. <laughs> what, what was what was he known for? What was the kind of movies that he was known for that was more controversial than what you did? Well, I mean, it was, it was just, he, 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 would, he would have rough sex moments with girls that would dress up as young girls. And, oh, I see, like um, rape fantasy yeah. type stuff? And I don't, I don't, maybe... I, I mean, he had several different things, so you know. But it, they were just, they were just, they were just kind of over the line in a lot of cases. Mm. So your first, uh, your first taste of uh, of porn on a camera was: did you do everything? Did you have sex? Did you do oral? That kind of stuff. Absolutely. Okay. Now uh, I understand you. Uh, you took a little hiatus from um, the porn industry for about eight years, and then you just got back into it recently. Uh, what made you decide to leave and then come back? Well, at the time that I took my break, um, I 
wasn't expecting on taking such a long break. Um, I had already won several awards. I had an action figure, a toy line, my own show on Playboy TV. Um, I was featuring all over the country. Um, yeah, the, the, the highest award you could win is the Performer of the Year, and I did that with AVN and the X-Rated Critics Organization. Really? Congratulations. Yeah. What year was that? Thank you. Um, that was in 2000. And what what did you and what was the the, the the your star performance that uh, won you that award? Well, those those, those, those awards are basically the embod the, the embodiment of your work and your career. You know, it's it, it's more not less for um, one particular project, but more so. I mean, when you're a performer of the year, it's everything that you did. Gotcha. So that was awesome, and that was pretty. That was the first award that I won. Although I had had several nominations, um, I won best actress for Awakening. Um, what was the, what was Awakenings about? It was movie just for vivid. Um, it was actually a dark story. Um, it was um, you know, PT um, Paul Thomas is his name. He he directed that for vivid, and the storyline was I got to a car accident and I was paralyzed, and it, a well, briefly paralyzed and it was a transformation of my life I used to my character you know used to party and you know go all crazy and you know and all my friends did too and then I got into the car accident had this life changing moment of uh, being able to learn how to walk again and the the story with um um it entails what my the people in my close circle how they still continue to you know do pornography and, and drugs and party and everything else and I went through self um like those health healers and all that kind of stuff right. <laughs> it's so weird that this is a this is actually a porno but I think if I remember correctly it was it was roughly um based on a true story did you have any sex in the movie weird. Absolutely. Uh, okay. I'm just making sure. I, I, our viewers are already like suddenly fall asleep here because they think that you're not going to have sex in this thing. It sounds a little too uh, no, spiritual. There was, there was all, I, I, seriously, it was, there was, there was all kinds of sex in it. It was right. crazy. Um, and then, and then in the end, it was, it, was, it was a really dark story. And in the end, my character ended up killing herself. Oh, that's not that's yeah, that's kind of a depressing. <laughs> no. What uh, it, it is. <laughs> what were you known for? What's like in porn? What are you known for? Because I'm not like a, a, an aficionado of your work, but but I might check it out now that I'm, I'm obviously talking to you. I didn't want to skew myself <laughs> by watching yourself prior to this. But what are you? Uh, uh, you're so funny. What's your special talents in this industry? You know, um, my, my scenes being very real, people will tell you that. But if you had to pick one thing, it would be my oral. You give good good head. Yeah, I got an award for that too. Really? What, what's, what's the best award you've won on that? Um, yeah, my, my favorite award obviously would be would be performer of the year. But to, to say that I'm the orgasmic oralist is pretty kind of a fun one. I like that. I like that. It's a very good. Uh, it's a good title to have. Now, mm -hmm. what's the um, what's the biggest penis that you've ever um, given pleasure to? <laughs> is it? Do you um, know? <laughs> the, the exact dimensions? No, but um, the, the person would probably be Lexington. Or oh my god, you know. he's big. He's what is he like? Yeah. 14 inches, something like that. 12 inches, yeah, 12, 14, something like that. Holy mackerel! Now, did you have okay. sex with him too? Oh, yeah, wow. Like, what guy could date you after having sex with him? It's like no one can please you <laughs> after that, you know. That's not true, <laughs> it's all in how you use it. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's, keep, keep telling people that they'll, maybe they'll believe it. What, what, uh, was you weren't able to take all of him in you, obviously, were you? I mean, there, there's science involved, you know? Yeah, I mean, there's just limitations on space limitations, right? Yeah, exactly. Do you think that a guy who has a big penis like that has uh, problems having sex? Because he, he can never be totally, you know, fulfilled because he can never, you know, totally penetrate a woman, right? Well, I think it all depends because in some cases you can. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah. What, what? I mean, every woman is, every woman, woman is, is shaped differently. Really? You know what I mean? There's so, women that can yeah. take something that big? Wow. That's yeah, crazy. absolutely. Hmm. Now, do you do uh, anal too, or you just do uh, the yeah. V? You do both? Yeah. Yeah. Um, is it, can you take more in the, uh, up the, the booty or uh, than you can yeah. in the other thing? Yeah. Ah, okay. So maybe, is, is that how he gets pleased maybe when he does the, 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 the booty <laughs> sex? In some cases, yes. Yeah. Uh, no, the, did you have anal with him? Yeah. Oh, you did? Oh, wow. Were you able to uh, accommodate him? Yeah. Really? Oh, so you're really a star then. You're a, you're a, you're an MVP all-star out there, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 I,
you know, sex is a sport, so I will take that. Wow. That, you, you had to work up to him. You didn't just start off with him, right? He, I'm sure it took no. you a couple of years in the industry before you worked your way up to him. No, you know, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know. Not necessarily, maybe. But I didn't really look at it look to, I never looked at it as working up to, you know what I mean? It's just, either you're into it or you're not, you know? Well, then, yeah, I, I would imagine, you, you know, you make you start out small and then you kind of like all right I, I can do this or I can do that I don't I right doesn't it like you have to kind of mm. wean yourself into it I would no, not necessarily. no really oh wow no. you're good you're good now <laughs> you've yeah, always been uh, into, you've always been into working out obviously and we're gonna get to that yeah. in a minute the, the whole training thing but do you think that working out made it easier for you in the industry uh, do people like prefer to work with you because you're in good shape and you, and you have a nice physique where some of these girls are just complete you know, slobs you know, uh, you know out of shape you <laughs> there, know. Is, there, there, is, there is truth to that statement because um, you know a lot of guys will tell you that a lot of guys don't have the, the, the freedom to, to be as picky with who they work with as girls are so a lot of times for them it is just work Yeah. and so they you know when, when they have moments or the opportunity to work with me you know, it's it's like a treat because they can really enjoy themselves. Yeah, I can imagine <laughs> you know, they yeah, probably would. Time, you're, you know? you're a beautiful woman, and, and you're in good shape. You know, the rarity Thank in that you. industry. <laughs> do people request you? Yes. Oh, they do. Interesting. Now, I always had this question. When you do any kind of like anal type uh, sex, do you have to prepare ahead of time? Do you have to do like enemas and, and fiber supplements and all that kind of stuff? Well, yeah, you, you need to. <laughs> I should I should hire you to be my fiberized, you know, uh, spokesmodel of uh, for species. You know. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> right? You can. Uh, that's hilarious. Yeah, but, but you do have to prepare. <laughs> you do have to prepare, especially when you're with someone like as big as Lexington Steel. I would think. Well, anybody, but yeah, absolutely. Okay. And these are just these. It, it, these are like you know when you get on stage, you got to make sure you got the right coloring on and the right makeup artist. You know, with porn, you, there's other things you got to you got to take into account. Now, how did you get into the whole lifting industry? Because it just seems to I don't know why I, you would think that all porn stars would want to work out because they're being displayed. I mean, every ounce of their body is being shown on camera. You would think they would want to look like they're in shape, but a lot of them don't do it. How did you get into into the whole you know, working out industry? Well, health and fitness is kind of a hobby of mine for most of my life. You know, I always wanted to look good. I had, uh, my genetics can kind of make me kind of sick. So, you know, obviously being an, an American woman, being slightly self-conscious, it became important to me. And I was in great shape when I first got in the business um, because I, I, had, I had been, uh, well, when I lived in Chicago, I should say, I, I rode my bike everywhere. I couldn't even own a car. So I would ride my bike easily 10 to 12 miles a day wow. just getting to it from work I I was um, I worked in corporate America before I ever before I ever did porn so um, so anyhow so I was, I was in really good shape but then the lifestyle of shooting all the time kind of threw me off my track you know you're on set well back then you'd be on set on these long movies you know for I don't know, 12, 18 hours. Wow, that's <laughs> a long time. You have craft services. Yeah, you have craft services, not, you know, eating snacks all the time, you know. <laughs> and, and depending on how much you work or whatever else, you know, you don't you don't really have, like, the same regimen as you once did. And, and, and the lifestyle, it, when you're, well, back then especially, you know, really kind of was very close to a rock star lifestyle. So mm. it, it's really easy to, you know, not be in shape when you're in the business if you're working all the time. Mm. Um, but anyway, um, I digress. Getting back to what I like, <laughs> which is being fit and when working out. When I was when I was featuring um, across the country, I had met a competitor, and she kind of gave me more information on the ins and outs of the business, and I was able to be a spokesmodel at um, the Arnold Classic. And I believe, I want to say... It was 2002 or 2003. You, you worked the booth? Yeah. And I, I tell you what, I was very amazed to see how out of shape a lot of people would get in an off season. And yeah. that totally freaked me out. And then I learned a lot more about the supplement usage and the, you know, the, 
the, the steroid use and everything else, and it just it really taught me a lot about the industry. But I still wanted to compete, so I was training to um, to do my first competition, and then I found out I was pregnant. I was about five and a half, six weeks out of my first show I was going to do. So how old were you then? After I had um, math is hard. Come on, man. <laughs> you don't even remember. It wow. Was, you're not that old. You're young still. Come on. You're in your 30s. Uh, I love you. Oh, yeah. Up there. Um, but it was about, I had to bang. Oh, no. I, I, I was, I was, that was 30. Because I had her when I was 31. Okay. Yeah. So I, I was 30. Um, so, yeah. So, um, then after I had her, you know, I got I got back in shape and, you know, I was training religiously, especially when I moved out here to Vegas. I have a fantastic trainer um, and one of the bodybuilders that he trains, um, who was also a tra- trainer for competitors, um, he had seen me. I was, I, I, <clears throat> it was this past summer, I, I was shooting a bunch and I, I came back because I, I was in the gym with my trainer probably three to five days a week and so I wasn't able to really get it in the summer so this summer although people are telling me how great I looked I felt completely like a sloth <laughs> because mm. I'm so used to being in the gym right. and so I was at four weeks of one of his um, dynamic programs and then the the bodybuilder was like he's like man you need to compete and I'm just like ah, I don't know I'm gonna he's like come on I'm like you know what why not bucket list I'll do it and so then we switched my we switched my diet and we switched my uh, my workout to the, the competition diet and workout. And then in four weeks, I competed for the Classic in Vegas and took fourth in my category. So that was last year, the NPC Las Vegas Classic. You were fourth in bikini. Yes. And uh, the, 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 yep. now that the, the, the bug has bit you, so to speak, you, I guess you're looking forward to doing it again, huh? I am. I, I really enjoyed it. I was, I, I was surprised how much I really did like it. Um, the the discipline was really good for me and the regimen and the routine was really good for me and it was it was awesome for my daughter to see too you know to see a completion of something and she was so sweet and when I brought home the trophy you know she's so proud you know because <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm on my diet too she's so funny she's like mom you can't have any of my snacks mm-hmm. until after you bring home the trophy and I'm like okay babe <laughs> did you get a lot of work after you competed because you were in such good shape um yeah um, I, I did have a lot of requests, and actually, there's there's a lot of there's there's a, a large demand in a, a bunny industry for muscle girls in adults. So, I had um, I had shot for uh, there's a she muscle and female muscle porn stars and a few other websites out there too that I've gotten a lot of response from. What, so. what when in in porn? What kind of like muscle girl porn? And you're not a big you're not a big bodybuilder, but no. I mean you're obviously more yeah. muscular than some of those. What kind of like porn like do they do for uh, the, the fit girls? Like what is it fetishy type stuff or what, what kind of? Yeah, mus- mostly mostly muscle worship stuff. Mm-hmm. Which is which is a total new thing to me that I, I didn't know what. Is there good money? <laughs> Let me ask you a question. I didn't even ask you. Is, what's the, what's the money like in porn uh, right nowadays? It is, can be it, it can be good, but it, it's all in how you market yourself. Mm-hmm. Did you and, make more and, and when how, you were twenty three than when you than when you do now? No, no. You make more now, really? Are you make, can you make? Well, I, I have a name now. You know, it's like my, my name has staying power. You know, I branded yeah. myself very well sure. in the beginning parts of my career and, and created a demand for myself. And in the industry, there's there's, there's more money in the industry. Um, I think overall, I mean, it's like what like a fourteen billion dollar industry or yeah. something like that. Um, although the production side of the, the, the movies and everything else are going through huge changes right now because of the internet and um, piracy and everything else. So in a lot of cases, there's not a lot of money. Hmm. But overall, there's there's a grand amount. <laughs> are, you, are, you making <laughs> si- are you making six figures a year over that? Um, I, 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 I I don't like to say. <laughs> like, just give me a yeah, yes. I mean, I would I mean, think yeah, you are. Absolutely. Yeah, I would think you definitely yeah. are. Are you rich? I mean, do you do you make a million bucks a year? I mean, no. Okay, but I mean, is there propensity to do good things with your money? Absolutely. But but just, there's many ways you can make money in as as, as an adult performer from the movies you do, the appearances you make, the websites, the gotcha. web camming, You know, selling merchandise. Mm-hmm. Um, appearances, you know, there's just so many different ways, you know. Gotcha. So, yeah. I think I'm going to hire you to be my date for the uh, for the Olympia in uh, in September. That's what I decided. Perfect. 
we decided we're going to hire for now on porn stars are going to be that's dates for proms dates for weddings you know that'd be great yeah I'm going to make you my I'm going to hire you for my, you're going to be my date for the for the Olympia I'm just going to walk around with you all weekend you can get your press pass Perfect. yeah that's going to be good we decided <laughs> decided awesome we could make some RX muscle videos you know to put up Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that we can put up, not, not the ones we can. Right, of course, of course. All right, so you 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 you've been bitten by the bug. You love the competing. You, obviously, you're you're. I haven't seen your video of you on stage, but I'm assuming you're probably great on stage because you like to perform. What's what's the next? I want to see you at a big show. Are you going to like try to up, up the ante and do like the USA or something like that? I mean, you are in Vegas I, right I there. I would love to. Yeah, I, I would love to. Obviously, I need, I, I need to qualify. I wasn't far off from qualifying when I did the Vegas mm-hmm. Classic um, because I, I took fourth, not third. Right. But that's okay. So, um, I'm hoping to do it the next one. I'm hoping to take my category next time. When is the next show you're going to be on stage at? I'm thinking I have to look at the dates, but um, the shows um, over the summer, and I'm thinking um, I'm thinking June or July, okay. and I will definitely let you know. Yeah, you got to keep us updated because I want I want to have the uh, Anari Vox uh, hotline here so that people can find out you know when you're competing, what you're doing next. You know, you got to keep us updated on this. Absolutely, I'll, I'll, I'll call you every week. That's it. That's fine with me. I'm good. I'm good with that. <laughs> You, you, I don't mind getting phone calls from. There's a couple of people that, that kind of annoy me, but you definitely wouldn't annoy me. You can make calls from my number. What, is, what does your daughter think about the whole porn thing? Has she, is she old enough to understand what's no, going on? No, she does not. Um, I have a very G-rated Disney home, and mm. I keep it that way. You know, um, it will be challenging. Um, she's 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 young enough to understand that it's a big deal. People around her find out, or to find out, or tell her, or whatever. Yeah. I would like to be the one to tell her when she gets old enough to figure it out. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but you know, and a lot of people ask, and I'm like, honestly, I, I have no control over how it's going to affect her or how her emotions are going to feel. I would just like to think that you know, I raised her with enough um, understanding to not be judgmental. You know, but I have a wonderful relationship with my daughter and I just I have a very hard time believing that she's going to, you know, judge me or hold it against me, you know, but you never know what, what teenagers are gonna do. <laughs> true, true, but you know, she's got the Barbie probably all the Barbie dolls that she could possibly want and you know, and uh, that that you know, you know that helps. She, she, she goes to a wonderful private school, <laughs> you know, she gets a great education. She, you know, she, She's, she's got a good life, no mm-hmm. question. You know, our job as parents is to make our children have you know better lives than we had, and mm-hmm. I've I've done that, and I'm I'm very proud of her. I'm, she's very smart. She's very she's very creative. You know, she's and and, and I, I know all parents say that, but I base this upon how she acts with other people and what other people tell me about my daughter. You know, she's going to test me all day long <laughs> as she's supposed to. <laughs> But, you know, she's, you know, she's, she's awesome. I'm, I'm the luckiest mom in the entire world. That's great. I mean, it's good to have a good relationship with your daughter, obviously. Uh, Yeah. Now, you're, uh, what made you settle in Vegas? Are you in there because that's where the business is pretty much? Well, honestly, when I, when I took my break and I was was with my second husband at the time, um, we had gotten involved in several different businesses of, of several different industries and mostly in entertainment, but, um, we had started a, a minor record label, and there was um, a very huge um, local scene out in Vegas for music and indie music and such like that. And plus, two, um, I um, um, I, I work at the Spirit Rhino out here. Oh, you do! I was um, going to ask you that. To, yeah. I was going to ask you that. You do dance there. It's the, uh, yeah, it's the it's, it's the only club I've ever I would ever call my home as a home club because I didn't dance before I did movies. Like I said, I worked corporate America. I did movies. The first time I ever um I ever stepped on the stage, I was headlining as a feature entertainer on the East Coast um, in Rhode Island. So that was kind of weird. You know, most girls, you know, start off you know with your clubs when they're seventeen, eighteen, nineteen years old. Yeah, you yeah. know. I, for me, I was a patron. So, <laughs> for most of my career, I was a patron of strip clubs longer than I ever danced in them. <laughs> wow, that's good. I like that. What, what did you? Uh, know, right? What do you get for like a? I mean, because most girls get twenty bucks for lap dance. Do you have like a higher number because of your fame and fortune in the industry? Well, when I feature, when I feature around the country, absolutely, because 
you know, I'm, I'm the special entertainer. But mm. here in Vegas, no, I just messed with the guys at the club. Really? Oh, okay. You know? So yeah, if anyone wants absolutely. to uh, get the dances for me, they can come down to Spearman Rhino and uh, and see what days yeah, you work. Yeah, in Las Vegas. You know what? It varies, to be honest with you. Um, a couple nights a week, I, I pretty much can come and go when I want to. So mm. I try to tweet it, though, when I'm there. Cool. That's or cool. or if I know that I have people in town, you know, that you know want to go to the club, then... You know, I definitely make it a point to go. And, you know, we set them up with um, with complimentary limo and VIP entrance. And how do uh, how do fans get in touch with you? Let's say people want to hire you to do something, or they want to maybe some some nutrition companies want to hire you to be represent them or say, be work at a booth for you, for them. What's the best way to get in touch with Anari Vox? Um, honestly, I, I I do have representatives that you know kind of feel through a lot of things but people hit me up on Twitter all the time or um, or email I, I love Twitter though there's even Facebook my Twitter is um, real in our box R-E-A-L I-N-A-R-I-B-A-C-H-S my Facebook is just in our box okay you, uh, you answer your own Facebook stuff yes okay generally from my phone <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be blown up after the show you're going to get a lot of people probably a lot of fans out there I hope so oh, yeah. but I would, I, would, I would definitely love to do more with you know, the, the, the sports and, you know, industry and, you know, getting sponsorships and doing things with supplement companies and such. That would be awesome. Well, you definitely can. Uh, you can definitely advertise some sex products. You know these. Uh, the, <laughs> <laughs> these. Uh, you know, there's a lot of these uh, libido products on the market. How to raise sex drive libido or enhancers, testosterone enhancers. Right? You know, this. I would definitely I, I see I, I you in, a, in an I, ad for those. I, I'd, like, I'd like to see. I'd like to see the research on those because I, I, I don't. I don't necessarily buy it that those that those work and are good. No, thing. maybe you should develop one and, and sell it on your own. That there you go. <laughs> Do some R&D. You should do some R&D. Okay. You can do some first-hand experience. You can uh, show all the research, you know, right on, on, on the net somewhere. You can show videos of all your research, <laughs> your, your market research you've done. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Well, um, go ahead. Go ahead. I, don't oh, I was just—I was just gonna say with the with the supplement usage and stuff like that. So, um, I don't really use any enhancement um, drugs. I try to keep it all natural. You know, I might have some amino acids or, you know, an occasional, you know, fat burner mm. or something, depending on if I have to cut or like a water pill or something. But right. I'm not big on, on, on women taking all that stuff. Are you a healthy I, eater? I think, do you live a healthy lifestyle? Yeah, I do. Are I you do. a whole I mean, foods I'm, market I'm, shopper? Um, when I can, you know, but I, I eat pretty clean. I mean, not, not, cause not as, as clean as some people where they're, um, where they make sure everything is completely organic and all that. I mean, I try to when I can, but I just, I, I don't have a lot of gluten in my diet. You know, I, I, I just try to keep it really simple. <laughs> I, I love cupcakes, so. Cupcakes, so yeah, I, I, that, that might have some gluten in it. Yeah. I have a question. I, know. I have a question. The, the male performers in the in the porn industry, do they use Viagra, Cialis? Uh, yeah, a lot of them do now. Do. Um, and it's so funny because back in my day, um, um, they didn't really. There was only no. like a couple of performers that did, and it was like all pretty mental. But nowadays, it's all over the place, and it kind of saddens me because once you're on it, um, you gotta get off it, <laughs> well, <that laughs> or you can't get off it. You know, it's like you, you, right. you're dependent on it forever. Now, Ron Jeremy said that he never uses any stuff because he says then it's going to screw him up. Then he's like you said, it's going to yeah. become dependent on it. Now, um, I find that if I do take a Cialis, the few times I've used it it makes it harder to have an orgasm you can stay hard erect yeah. longer but uh, yeah. I would imagine that's probably not good for your industry huh no hmm. no and and, and it, 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 it prolongs the moment because the job is, the job is based the project can, can, is going to fall on the guy you know whether or not it's going to fail or not because if the guy can't perform or if he can't um, finish <laughs> the work right. you know it's you know dollars are lost so it's the hardest job for anybody in the industry is on the mail. Yeah, I would think so. There's a lot of pressure. I, I'm not a good pressure performer. I can't even pee in front of people. I have to like go into a stall when I'm in a public restroom. So I probably would be a terrible porn star. You know. <laughs> you know, these yeah, guys. You, you gotta like to be watched. You know. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm a very private person. I, uh, I, I, I 
I don't do well when other people are watching me, uh, you know, pee or something like that. It's too much pressure. I put a lot of pressure <laughs> on myself. I sensitize yourself a little to it to be a porn star. Yeah, it, it's definitely in your head. You gotta, <laughs> it, and the thing is that, uh, uh, <laughs> the thing is that the second you start putting pressure on yourself, you're done. You're done, yeah. You're done. Because you can't, it's very hard to get yourself out of it. You know, I've, really, I've seen guys, you know, have a hard time on set and then then they have so much self-doubt and they're trying too hard and once once you go down that road there's no coming back are you good since you've been in the industry for a while are you good at relaxing guys like new guys to the industry do you do you break in a lot of people Um, no I don't really like to because I like to make sure that the person is there I'm not trying to hold anybody's hand you know and I don't really I think that half the people that are in the business now probably shouldn't be really Um, Hmm. yes and I think there should be an age limit on when you can begin Interesting. Interesting. Because I don't, I don't think that mentally a lot of them are uh, prepared to to handle it, you know, or or to handle the repercussions of how it's going to affect them later, you know. And I think that, and I think that in the, in, in the dancing industry as well. Do people do a lot of drugs because of that to try to like you know numb themselves to what they're actually doing? No, I don't. I don't. I didn't really see that, but it's hard to say what people do in their personal life. You know, I mean, people numb themselves from life in general. Sure. Do you, do you have a drink? Do you guys drink when you're on the porn set or no? On set, no. Okay. No, 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 no. It's a very no, professional no, no, no. Uh, atmosphere. Yeah, absolutely. Plus, I mean, and now everything is high def. You know? Yeah, you can see, you're right. <laughs> you can see everything. It's probably not a good thing for the porn industry, actually, because some of these people don't even... Do you have professional makeup yeah, artists doing all your makeup and that stuff when uh, you do these things? I mean, not all the time, but absolutely. There's some amazing makeup artists that are in our business. You know, and that all comes down to the budget. You mm, know, fortunately, I I've you know I I do quite well, and I have done makeup make before too. So yeah, but I don't I don't need one, but I like one. I like to have them. Yeah, why not? You but then sometimes, but it's, yeah, you know. But the thing is, is that when you get a new makeup artist, they don't the first time that they do you is not necessarily the best because they don't really so, know your face yet. Yeah, you know. Do you have a regular okay. you use? And. It, it depends on the production because the production will hire the makeup artist. So um, there are a few that I see often. Yes. Okay. Well, I don't have a personal one per se. I am looking forward to seeing you compete now because now I'm going to be looking out for you and uh, hopefully I will see you at the USA Championships because that'll be a lot of fun. We can uh, do a lot of good videos with you out there if you're up for it, you know. Oh, that would be fantastic. Yeah, do you ever make it up to Vegas? Yeah, of course I do. Many times a year. Uh, we have a lot of shows there. I'd like to come out there maybe a little early but if you do the USA and we can do some like a, a day in the life of Inari Vox, I think that would be a great video. That would be, that would be awesome. We can follow you around you. and trail you, stalk you for a day and uh, see what you do. Please, please. And, please uh, stop me. We'll see, now I feel like I'm in a movie all of a sudden. But uh, I want to thank you for being so candid and honest and open with us. I think our listeners are really going to enjoy your story. And I think that they're now going to watch your and follow your not only your, your porn career, but your fitness career or your bikini career, I should say. And uh, hopefully you'll be one of our pros you know, in the next year or so. That would, that would be awesome. That would be great. And I appreciate your support and you know your... Your, your interest in my story. <laughs> Thank you very much. And we will follow Anari Vox uh, at the 2012 NPC uh, Vegas Classic and then hopefully on yes. into the USA. Thank you, babe. Have a great day. <laughs>